<laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Money Printers Podcast. I'm your co-host, Tola. I'm here with my billionaire brother, Dame. And we got our billionaire sister, Abby, here with us today. So we're going to get started. Abby is an accountant. And we're gonna, she's going to share a little, a little bit about herself and, and what she does. So Abby, first question, you know, um, how did you get started? And how long have you been an accountant for? Well, let me start off by saying I love that you are just laying hands on my financial. Abby, the billionaire. I am receiving it. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) Let's go. So I'm going to be 100% transparent with you guys. I got started as an accountant um, after my divorce. I literally went back to school. I obtained my bachelor's degree in business management, my master's in accounting. And I didn't want to miss out on raising my daughter the way that I wanted to raise her. And what that means is that I didn't want to be in the corporate world. Um, I didn't want to work a nine to five and not being able to participate in the activities of her life. So in 2014, I literally decided I found a little office, me and my girlfriend, we would drive around Tampa looking for an office space. And I finally found a little office space, which was gold to me at that time. Like right now, if we look at this office space, we'll probably say, "Mm, that's too small. But back then it was gold and silver. And so I literally opened my first firm in 2014. And and I've been running since then. Um, I love what I do. I love the clients that I have, but that's literally how I started. I love that. 2014. That's a that's a long time. Yeah. You about what six, seven, eight years in the game. Yes. <laughs> I love I love Better. I love your dedication. How you guys were driving around Tampa, looking yeah. for that 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 prime location or that location that you just just to get your feet with. That's that's amazing. Then yeah. you want to add to anything right there? No, nah, that shows the grind and dedication, right? And that shows that a lot of times. You know, we, we focus on the end result, but the, the journey is beautiful. Like she's been grinding for eight years and now look at where she is. So that's that's an amazing um, testament to you. So uh, what were you doing before before you were an accountant? I was a I was a wife <laughs> before accounting. I was a wife. I was working in the corporate world. I was literally working in education, to be quite honest with you. I worked for um I work for an education service to where what we would do is we would enroll students into school, into college. Um, And I did that for about six, seven years Um, while working. um, I was also taking care of my daughter. So that was it. That's all I was doing prior then. Um, It's so funny because um, life circumstances will, will um, will make you change your path but you have no idea how beautiful the path is. Just like you said, it's the journey, not really the destination. Right, right. And I love that. I love that you said that. I love that you said that because like you said, you may think you have one thing on your path, but it's something so much greater. It's something that you couldn't even imagine. It's like, wow, you know, super abundant. What were you gonna say, Billy Boy? Nah, I just love how she's always, you know, been, been a helping hand to people, right? She's like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a wife, I'm, I'm taking care of my daughter, you know, now I'm helping people, you know, with the tax and, and that's, that's just dope. I love that. You know, it just, it shows that that's like your, I think that's your purpose if you ask me, mm-hmm. but I don't know if you ask me <laughs> to help people. Am I, am I right or wrong? Oh, you are absolutely right. Right, right. See, I love that. I love that. So Abby, what was it like growing up? I know, I know you're Haitian, right? What, what was it like growing up and was investing taught to you? Oh my gosh, that's such a great um, question. I was born in Haiti. I was born in Gonaive, Haiti, um, but I was raised in Sarasota, um, Sarasota, Florida. And mm. it's so funny, in our family, my dad used to say, there's three of you guys. Um, my sister have the management skill. Um, I have the business skill and my brother had the techie skills. So he, he would say all the time, you guys are not allowed to be poor. So, um, but I would say the numbers, the idea of numbers, I started off understanding numbers at a young age. My dad, um, 
is a real estate investor. And whenever we would go to the bank, I understood interest rate at a, at a young, young age. I knew what interest rate was. I knew how to, um, you know, flip. And it's so funny because I'm not even in the real estate, um, but I understood how the market as a whole worked. And thank God to my dad, because the, the business mindset, I literally got it from him. Um, so I understood business at a young age. When it comes to stock market, I didn't really um, got into the stock market till later on um, in my life. But the business mindset was cool. So there's just three of us. Um, I'm the middle child. You guys know what they say about the middle child. So I was a stubborn one. Um, I'm going to do whatever the heck I want to do. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But I think the um, our system in our home, the idea that it's God, family, then it's career. That was the foundation of my growth. I love that. I love that. Always got to put God first. Yes, sir. You know, uh, before anything, because he is the maker and he is the path, the path maker to, you, you know, your success. So I love that. I love that. Um, you going to say something, Dave? No, nah, I was just going to say, like, you know, my family dynamic is similar. <clears throat> like, I'm, I'm, I'm oldest. I have a younger brother and a younger sister. So... You know, we know that typically, like she said, the middle child is the one who's a little bit more defiant. I'm going to do what I want to do. And you're right smack in. Okay, the oldest, super strict, you know, super tight rope. The middle is like, all right, I'm a little bit more loose. The younger, yes. the younger one is like, nah, this is, you know, this is it. I'm the baby. So, you know, and I love that dynamic. Like you said, you each bring something different to the table. You know, when three come together, magic happens. So the three-headed horse, I love that. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I love that. So um, you know, I'm actually a middle child, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the middle child, y'all. So I mean as a rebel. Exactly how, I know exactly how you feel, Tola. <laughs> right, right. We here. We here. We're right here. <laughs> right. Are you trying to leave me out? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. We don't need to be motivated. We motivate ourselves. Here we go. Love that. Here we go. I love that. I love that. It's true. It's definitely true. Yep. It's true. So, Abby, what has been your biggest hurdle thus far being an accountant? And how did you overcome that? I would say is finding my purpose, finding my niche, finding what mm. I passionate about and then relate it to accounting. Um, I believe your career, what you do is your mission. Um, I also believe it is also your purpose. Some people will say that, you know, that's just my job. You know, it is not a job. If that's what you're mm -hmm. passionate about, if that's what you love to do, that is your purpose. That is your mission. I would say it's finding my, finding where it is that I fit in. Um, and when I found the trading community, it was like a light bulb. It was like, okay, it, it, I get, I understood, I got excited waking up. Um, I got excited. So I understood really, really fast. And I'm grateful for that, that that was it. Okay. So, cause you'll find a lot of people are in the industry, but they really don't know how to narrow down that industry to what is their pur purpose. So I think that was probably the biggest and overcoming it was, it's okay to try things and it's okay to fail. It's okay to try things. All the time. It's okay to fail because there's no way that you would know that this did, doesn't work if you didn't try it. Yep. So I think I tried so many different niche. I, I tried the real estate investment niche. I tried the restaurant niche. I tried the, okay, everybody niche. Fine. I'll take everybody in it. Anybody. <laughs> <laughs> But then once you find your, once you find your purpose, um, it's, it's heaven. It's, it's, it's heaven. Oh, no, that's, that's a fact. You know, I, I, I love that you said that because a lot of people are afraid to try new things. And I am like, I'm that person. I'm always trying something new. Dame could tell you like, Tola is always trying something new. He's cooking, he's taking pictures. He's in options, he's in real estate, he's doing this, he's a dead Let's life. go. I'm doing everything, right? Because you only have one life to live, right? And, you know, you can't limit yourself to, you know, one thing. You never know where your, where your passion may really, like, you know, pull out or whatever, you know? So you don't want to limit yourself to one thing and say, oh, you know, this is what I like. And, 
you know, you may like something else and something else may really like, really like boost your your energy and boost your aura and everything. So mm-hmm. I love that you said that. You got to try new things, y'all. You, you know, to. for those that are listening, if you're scared of trying something new, just go out and do it. If, if you're scared to ride a bike, go ride that bike. Ride you may bike. see some things, you may meet new friends yeah. and that, that may push you to a new business venture. You never know. So, you know, definitely always try new things. I love that you said that. Yeah. Absolutely. I completely agree. It's like, I don't even say failure. That's right. It's no losses, only lessons. So the lesson you learn is going to push you towards what your purpose is. So it's like, you tried this. Okay. I don't, I may not necessarily like this. You tried restaurants, you tried, you know, real estate. I may not necessarily like this. This is going to push me towards my purpose. But yeah. at the same time, we spoke about before the journey, all the tools that you picked up on the journey for what you were doing before the lesson that you learned, now you carry that over to when you find your purpose and that's it. It's like, you know, it's like magic happens. So I, I agree a hundred percent. No losses, y'all. Only no lessons. lessons. Not, Only be, lessons. not be fearful of learning new lessons because that's going to make your journey that much greater. hundred <laughs> percent. So, you know, you touched on your, 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 your niche, right? So we know that you are a tax accountant. Okay. So how did you, I guess, finally decide on becoming a tax accountant. I decided, it's so funny because I remember when I was doing my master's, <clears throat> my professor himself told me that I was in the wrong industry. Um, he saw I would do better in entertainment industry um, because I was very um, spontaneous. I was an extrovert. So he doesn't believe extroverts belong in the financial industry. And if you are a woman and you listening to this podcast right now, do not let anyone tell you where you belong. Regardless Mm -hmm. what personality, what character um, you have, you belong where you believe you belong. So I said, listen, I'm going to prove you wrong. I remember at the end of the class, I created my thesis and the title of my thesis was relationship over transaction. And I'm a, I'm a, a firm believer that, you know, as a community, as a people, we need to build relationship. We can't see each other as a transaction. So then yeah. I remember he said, listen, you're going to be an amazing accountant, <laughs> accountant. because of the, uh, of the way that I presented my thesis is um, in that fact. So when it came to taxation, because I'm such an extrovert, I'm a spontaneous, there's one thing in account that forever changed, which is taxation. And I was like, there's no way I could ever be bored. <laughs> By the right, time right, you learn it. something in taxation, it changes. Yeah. So it's a forever changing industry. And I love the fact, and I get bored really easily. So when I tell people I'm an accountant, they say to you, oh my gosh, you know, you, you doesn't, doesn't like align with your personality, but uh, uh, taxation is a forever changing industry. So that's why I had chose taxation. I love that. I, love that. I have a question, right? So yeah. based on your professor, knowing your personality, do you feel like he kind of said what he thought you needed to hear? Because again, you being the middle child and I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to be defiant. Do you feel like he said what you needed to hear to push you to go harder or push you more towards your purpose. Do you think that's what happened? Oh my gosh, absolutely. And I mm-hmm. think that's that that's how it is in life. Mm-hmm. You know, um, sometimes it is a negative, if it is a negative comment or it is a, a negative action towards you that put from someone that pushes you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that pushes you to overcome the idea that even like with my daughter, she was like, Ma, don't compare me to other people. I don't like that. Or mom, you know, let's always speak like I say you know what sometimes what you will find is that life circumstances or whoever would speak over your life that is a push and it can actually push you to positivity a negative um action could push you to a positive reaction oh talk about it Abby (laughs) get it talk about it it to a positive get the picture I love it I I love love that you know you always have to have that that positive Millionaire, billionaire mindset. Yes, sir. and I'm pretty sure that a lot of millionaires they think like that. They're like, "Look, you're gonna compare me to this person. I'm gonna show you that I'm better than this person. Or you're gonna, go. you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna place me in a box, right? I'm gonna make sure I, I break out of that box, 
right? So I, I just love that. I love that. You just, ooh, just inspired me. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm, a, I'm about to go get a poster that says the relationship account billionaire. I received it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Sure. Let's get it. Sure. I'll share. I'll share with you the link where we got these we these uh these pictures made, and you definitely you know we 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 do our affirmations daily, as you know. So say that every day. I am a billionaire, right? I am a relationship accountant. I'm a billionaire. That's it. And <laughs> you know how it goes. It's, it's gonna come. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, um, Gabby, what I mean, Abby, <laughs> what should every <laughs> That's my wife's name. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> what should every trader know that most accountants know? You know, like, you know, what what is what is something that traders don't know that accountants usually know about? There is there is this mindset that traders need to understand. And as an accountant, we understand it. Trading is mm. a profession. Use it as such. Mm. It, um it's not a hobby and you shouldn't treat it as such. Um, and, and I don't think anything that um, anything that is a hobby, it's something that brings us what that we do um, to bring us joy in a short period of time. Right. That's a hobby. So if we're building generational wealth, that should not be a hobby. That should be a right. profession. Right. Wow. So I think as an accountant, we see you as a trader. We see you as a profession. We see what you do as a profession. And I think every trader should see that as well. Mm. See, I, and you know what? It's funny. I was talking to a, a friend of mine and he was saying, Yo, you know, my little brother, he trades, but he treats it like a hobby. Like he's just like having fun with it. He's playing around with it. And it's like, no, no. You, are playing with, you are playing with money and this money can bring you back millions and billions. You know, you got to treat this as a profession and, start taking your profits like a professional would right so I, that's that's the fact I, you know for those that are listening and you know we, we always preach it in the in the in the community take your profits you know and and start treating this like a business yes. and don't treat it like a hobby you know so that's 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 most definite thank you for sharing uh, oh no problem for sure for sure so when it comes to right being a tax accountant Mm-hmm. Uh, specifically for for traders, right? What would you say are you know some some do's or don'ts? Okay, um, to mm-hmm. setting it up as as a could you give us how a trader would set up, um, you know their profession as a business and then some do's and don'ts. Ooh, now you guys get into the good stuff. Okay, <laughs> so. This is what IRS says. IRS says, and I love quoting IRS. IRS says that if the nature of your trading activities does not qualify as a business, you are not a trader. You are an investor. So it's very important. And I know you guys teach this in your community. So it doesn't matter whether you call yourself a trader, a day trader, a scalper, a long term. You are an investor and not a trader. So it's very important to know what are the guidelines when it comes to trading and when it comes to IRS and how IRS sees things. So first thing I would say is identify what type of trader you are. Am I a day trader? Am I an investor? What I am? Because how how you trade will determine how you are taxed. If you are a day trader, you are not taxed the same as a long-term investor. So it's very important to identify what type of trader you are. So when it comes to trading, when it comes to taxation, you are taxed two different ways. You are taxed long-term and short-term. Okay, long-term is anything that is held over a year, right? Anything that is held over a year or longer, you are capped at 20%. Now, Abby is not saying you are taxed at 20%. I say you are capped at 20%. Anything that is um, short term, anything under a year, you are capped at 37%. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not want to pay IRS 37% of my money. <laughs> I know I don't. Not. I know some traders that had to pay $200,000, $300,000 on tax. 
because they didn't understand that, listen, you have options. That's one of the reasons why I like to trade options because you have options. There right. are options, you have options and all you have to understand is how, what are those options and how they can actually benefit you. So there's two ways. One is trading under TTS. TTS is a trader tax status, right? So IRS is saying, listen, if you are a day trader and you in the stock market for four hours or more, you're studying, you're reviewing, you're doing your research, this is a profession, you know? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to allow you to take business expense, business deductions. I'm going to allow you to do that. But here's some recommend. Here's the requirements. IRS says, okay, your requirements need to be what you need to trade. Um, 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 you need to be in the stock market for four hours per day, right, or more, and that includes your research. That includes you waking up at four um, at four a.m. to check and review the stock market. That includes you being in trading view. Um, that includes you, you know, you reading your um. um trade in the zone. So as long that you are spending four hours in the stock market, IRS says, okay, as long you are trading 720 trades per year, you're okay. As long your trades are daily, weekly, and you're not holding anything for 30 days, then listen, that book you purchased, you can deduct that. That discord that you're paying a monthly recurring, you can deduct that. Um, the cell phone that you are trading on, you can deduct that. So IRS opened up a door to say, listen, this is your profession. This is what you do. So you should be able to deduct those expense. So one, the basic is to know how are you taxed. Two is to know what are the options that are available to you. Mm. Mm. Okay. She just dropped a lot of gems, right? Yeah. But the main thing that I, that I liked and I took away from this was TTS, right? Yeah. So, um, A lot of probably 99% of us are spending about four plus hours in this market for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. You know, just doing research, trading. You know, I know some people are in the market at least from 9 30 to 12 or 11 30, right? And then after that, power hours. So from 3 to 4 p.m., right there is like almost four hours, right? And then waking up early and looking at um, you know, the news and et cetera, et cetera, reading, trading in the zone and all these other things, you are doing well over four hours. So you should take advantage of this TTS for sure. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. No problem. If another option, I love options. Another option you have is, okay, you could either trade under TTS status or you could trade under an LLC. And the beautiful thing about trading under LLC as a sole proprietor is that you not charge, you not charge that 15.3 self-employment tax. So you don't even have to pay that 15.3 self-employment tax. So you have options. Just look into those options that are available to you. Are there, are there any other loopholes for traders uh, trading under an, an LLC? So when it comes to the do's and don'ts, so here's the do's for me. So you're trading under as an individual, you the only you can only deduct three thousand dollar per year up to seven years when it comes to um, um, how much of your loss that you can deduct, right? So mm. my thing is, if um, um, if I can only deduct three thousand dollars and I have lost twenty five thousand dollars, something is wrong, or I have lost fifty thousand dollars, something wrong. There's another beautiful loophole that's called MTM. MTM is mark to market. Um, the beautiful thing about mark to market is that it eliminates the wash sale rule, which I know we'll talk a little bit more later. It eliminates the wash sale rule, but it also gives you this beautiful opportunity to write off the whole amount of the loss that you had for the year. So when I say do's and don'ts, if you are trading leaps, if you are a long-term investor, this is not for you. Mm. This is for the individuals that would be capped at 37%. This is for day traders. IRS is not trying to help investors. <laughs> IRS is saying, this is for the day traders. This is not for if you're doing your 2024s. The reason why you want to actually keep your long-term investment is because so you're not taxed so high on them. 
I have a question, right? Yes. Sir. Um, you you may or may not have tapped into this, right? How many trades does a day trader have to make to be considered a day trader in the tax in the tax world? In the tax, seven hundred and twenty <laughs> trades a year. Yeah. So that's about three. That's about three to four trades a day. A day. Okay. okay. Perfect. Perfect. I just want, I wanted you guys, I wanted you to say that, you know, just so people can know and understand that there's a lot of people taking a lot of trades all day, every single day, and they are not taking advantage of, you know, these kind of tax benefits and they're trading under their personal, what well, could be trading under an LLC or, you know, um, MTM or the TTS. So, you know, this is, this is great information. Absolutely. Yeah. Want to, yeah. No, a hundred percent, you know, so just make sure that you are, paying attention to what to what Abby said, right? So you have options. If you're gonna trade under your individual name, your individual social security, um, you do have to have 720 trades per year to be qualified as a day trader, okay? Now, if um, you do operate under an LLC or a corporation, you can elect for um, MTM, right, TTS, so. Money printers. If you're looking to learn how to invest in the stock market by trading options, look no further. The Money Printers community is filled with skilled traders helping you make money and navigate through this market efficiently to help you reach your million dollar floor. If you're looking to join us on this wealth building journey, click the link below. Peace. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Okay, so um, we know that there's a big misconception that you, know, you need $25,000 to trade, okay? Um, I'm not sure why that misconception um, is out there, but could you provide some insight on that also? Why is that a misconception that we need $25,000 in your account to trade? I think that is more, I think it's more of a brokerage. I think what happened is uh, when people think of, okay, I'm trading as margin account or I'm, I'm trading under cash, that they need to have a large amount to trade. This Okay, you'll find that a lot of people too that are just starting in the stock market. One of the things that I say is, if you're starting, if you're just starting in the stock market, focus on your craft, focus on mastering your craft, focus on, you know, um, perfection, um, getting your craft into a perfection state away. I'm not sure why you do not need $25,000 to start trading in the stock market. I mean, Terry says it the most, right? <laughs> you can start trading with a thousand dollar. You find people start trading with five hundred, um, with five hundred um, dollar. So when it comes to a tax taxation, um, the twenty five thousand to me is a myth. <laughs> you do not need twenty five thousand. Yeah. So like me and Dame, we we both started with like five hundred to a thousand dollars trading options. So you definitely do not need twenty five thousand dollars to trade. Um, just get a cash account. You know, get a cash account. We, you know, TD, TD Ameritrade is a great place where you could get a cash account and you don't have to trade on margin. You know, you know, margin is borrow money for those that don't know. But let's not get off into <laughs> let's not get off into that. Right. <laughs> um, so you make what are the biggest differences between trading under your personal and trading versus well, trading under an entity? Mm. Okay, trading under in the taxation world, right? Trading mm -hmm. under as an individual, um, you don't have any individual benefits, right? Um, you don't have um, any individual benefits. That includes um, any of your deductions you cannot deduct. So as an individual, IRS sees you as an investor. Gotcha. You are an investor. So if you day trading under your social security number, um, then you can't put it this way. Business as a, um, all the tax benefit, all the tax advantage was created for business. It was not created for individual. So that right there is huge, right? So as an individual, what are the tax benefits that are available to me? Um, if you remember in our past um, president, right? he took away anything that we can actually deduct as an individual, right? Why? Because he increased, right, our standard deduction. So as an individual, you don't, you don't really have any tax advantage. As a business, right, you have the advantage 
of your expenses to lower your net income, your net income lower where you are in the tax bracket. So trading under a business gives you that opportunity that all the expense that you have to opt the year, you are able to deduct those expenses. That is the most beautiful thing to be quite honest with you. So I'm gonna give you a perfect example because I love giving an example. So I'm trading under my individual and Tola, you trading under an entity. Uh, we both made $250,000 for the year, right? Mm -hmm. I made 250, you made 250. I'm trading under my social use, so trading under your entity. Well, my net income is showing 250. Well, you, you had about $20,000 worth of expense, right? So 20,000, that leaves you with how much? 230. 230. Mm -hmm. So that 230 could put you in a lower tax bracket than me being at 250. Gotcha. So you are going to pay less taxes than I am. I am going to be taxing the overall of my net income. So the beautiful thing of trading under an entity is that it gives you the opportunity to pay less tax and so many other benefits. Because <laughs> realistically, I'm going to be really 100% transparent with you. If you sue me, mm -hmm. totally, the only thing you'll probably find is the $200 that I have in my savings. <laughs> in my checking account, really. And the reason why is because I don't own anything. I don't want to own anything. You don't want you don't want a, anything under your social. You want to make sure the majority of things are un, either under an ass um 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 under um an entity. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the reason why is because if I come after you to sue you, I cannot sue you for um, your personal asset. I can't come after you on your personal asset. So there's so many other benefits that is aligning with the idea that when you hit um, the trading industry, you want to make sure that you protect your assets, you protect your money. Right, right. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. Own nothing, control everything. There you go. I gotta get that t-shirt. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Here we go. So, I gotta get that um, t-shirt. So I guess what, what would some loopholes be for an entity? Right. So I know the we know the difference between trading under your <clears throat> under your personal social, right? And then you have trading under the entity. So what are some additional, some additional loopholes? So you go set up your your mm -hmm. LLC or your S Corp. Now what are the loopholes? The loophole is going to be you need to actually run this as a, as a business. See, people will say, Abby, if I could trade under TTS, why would I trade under an LLC? Well, with TTS, you need to requalify every year. Every year, those requirements. So let's just say this year, I only trade 700. I wouldn't be eligible for TTS. I only trade 700 trades this year. Well, I wouldn't be able to, um, I wouldn't be eligible for TTS. So the, the loophole when it comes to trading under an entity is that you have to actually respect the fact that this is a business and you have to run it as such. You have to respect the entity. So what does that mean, Abby? You cannot use your entity for personal purposes. Um, so you can't go to Disney using your business card. OK, once you open that business, you fund that business account, you start trading under an EIN, you have to respect it that way. Um, another thing is that you find that now that you are running a business, right, you need to know what to do with your money. You can't just have your money just sitting somewhere. We need to learn, you know, how to move our money. I always tell our clients, there's three people that you need to have um, in a speed dial, an accountant a financial advisor, an attorney. Those three people should be in your speed dial. So I would say the loophole with um, trading under an entity is that you have to respect the entity. You have to start running it just like a business. Whereas if you were trading under a social, you do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. I love that. So if you guys are listening again, it is a business. Do not mix your personal with your business. Please keep the two separate and please, please, please respect your profession. Thank you, Abby. All right. All right. Never, All right. never <laughs> mix business with pleasure. Never mix business with pleasure. Thank you, uh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so 
a quick question, right? Yeah. Can I have more than one entity or one more than one trading entity? Oh my gosh, very good question. And people even ask me, can I still trade under my social security number? You can, you can have more than one entity and you can still trade under your social security number as well too. So let me be transparent. The account that I day trade under, mm -hmm. the account that I day trade under is under an EIN number. My long-term investment, that means my leaps, stocks that... Um, that I'm holding for more than five, day, five years, 10 years, those are under my social. My retirement account is under my Roth. So there you do have options. Um, one, just because you're trading under an entity doesn't necessarily mean you can't trade under a social. Identify what that account is for. A day trader should not be trading under a social security number. They're just my person. <laughs> so you can't. You can. Okay. That's a good question. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so I know earlier you mentioned the washout rule. Mm -hmm. okay. And for those who don't know, would you be able to explain um, to everyone what exactly the wash sale rule is? The wash sale rule, is, the, actually the wash sale rule came to part um, because of our big dogs. So what they would do is, IRS came up with this rule because what everyone would do is come December, they would pull up their portfolio, anything that they were at a loss, they would sell it. And then they would write that loss in their tax return. And then they would turn around in January, they would repurchase them. So I was just like, no, you can't do that. That's double dipping. You cannot do right. that. So IRS came up with the right rule where you cannot repurchase, you cannot repurchase a security OK, once you sell it as a loss, you have to wait for 30 days. It's that mm -hmm. simple. So you need to wait 30 days in order to repurchase that security. But here's the beautiful thing. If you elect mark to market election, which is an accounting method, if you elect mark to market election, it eliminates the wash sale rule. Mm -hmm. OK, so could you get another, a little bit more into market to market? Because I know, you know, we've mentioned this several times, but could you break down a little bit more market to market and how that plays a part in your entity? Yes. So mark to market election is an accounting method. You pretty much tell an IRS, you're changing your accounting method to cash, right? Um, so it's an accounting method that we're changing. The benefit of mark to market is that currently speaking, trading under your social security number, all of us here, right? that is an, an, an investor, whatever our total loss is for the year, IRS allows you to write off $3,000 up to seven years, right? So let's just say I lost $25,000, right? In the stock market, I can only write off the $3,000 that I've lost up to seven years. So what mark to market does, it says, no, it eliminates that. It says, listen, if your loss was $25,000, you're able to write off the whole amount. Not only does it do that, but it also uh, um, eliminates the wash sale rule. So you don't have to worry about the 30 days to get in a security. And one of the biggest thing in the better back um, that they're actually looking into is adding the wash sale rule into cryptocurrency. Oh, so wow. currently right now, you guys can buy all buy and sell whenever you want to when it comes to cryptocurrencies. So uh -huh. they're coming to where they're going to add the wash sale into cryptocurrency. Hmm. Wow, it's interesting. It's, it's good to know. Mm -hmm. I actually I actually had a question about what you said earlier, right? With the 30 day, uh, uh, not 30 day after you sell and, you know, trying to re rebuy um, a security um, does that work with options or is it only with a regular? It works with options, security. So when you actually did an option call, it was a security you purchased. When you did a right. put, it was a security. So it's securities. Gotcha. So if you made a loss on that, you can't, mm -hmm. you can't buy you it. You purchase can't buy it that again. security. 30 days. <laughs> Guess good so. to know. That's good to know. Okay. <laughs> 
are there any are there any limits to what you can write off as a you know as a as a trader it's so funny because you would hear people say oh my gosh i lost um so because you'll find some traders they'll say i lost three hundred thousand dollars in the stock market or i lost a million dollars in the stock market listen they got a good accountant okay they're writing off that two three hundred thousand dollars. They're writing okay. off that seven hundred thousand dollars. Okay, they're not writing off three thousand dollars, and the reason why is because they're not trading under their their um their social security number. You'll ask Ian, ask Trapper, ask Mark, ask um Terry. How do you trade? They will not tell you they're trading under their social. Mm. Mm. They're trading under. Ian. Well, there you have it, y'all. <laughs> and if you were, you, have it. you had any questions on whether you should be trading under your, your personal name or an entity, I mean, I, I believe those, those questions, you know, are pretty much, uh, pretty much answered. So how do you pick a good account, a good tax account? Ooh, I trade? always say, find an account that is aligned with your industry. I am a trader's account. If you are a truck driver, you want to make sure that that accountant understands the industry that you are currently in. If you are a real estate investor, you want to make sure that that account understands real estate. So I would say be mindful and find an account that is aligned with your industry and with your needs. Um, I'm really big. Like if a client comes to me and they, they currently have an account, finding a good account is hard. It's kind of like, finding, you know, a good doctor or um, finding um, a good hairdresser. I've been going to the same hairdresser since I was 10 years old. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, go. There you, go. You, you know, finding a good barber, right? If, once you find your good barber, do you let that barber go? No, you don't. We locked him for life. <laughs> you lock him for life. So once you find yourself a good accountant, treat your accountants well, and then just make sure you find one that is aligned with your industry. I'm, I'm the trader's accountant. I love my traders. I trade. I understand the stock market. So it makes a difference. So when the questions comes in, it makes it easier for your accountant to answer because that's makes their niche. Hmm. Right. No relationship, right? Relationships <laughs> over transactions. Yes, okay? sir. But when you build the right relationships, your transactions will go smoothly. That's a bar. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 that is so true that is so so true <laughs> Ab, any any words of wisdom for those that are listening yes if you are going to trade under an entity guys it's very important that you keep your books keep your books okay keep your books make sure you allocate your expense make sure you reconcile your expense make sure you have a P&L and your balance sheets um, that's one thing, two things, even if you're not going to keep books, right? Let's just say you're not using QuickBooks online, have a spreadsheet, you know, create a spreadsheet, be disciplined. Um, if you are not going to be, um, let's just say you want, um, to, I have a client that what he knows he's not, um, he's very disciplined. He, the amount that he knows he's going to owe, he actually takes 30% of whatever it is he makes in the stock market. And he put in a high yield savings account, you know, he makes the money on top of it. So at the end of the year, if he knows he's going to have a high tax liability, that money is already available or do estimated tax, you know, on a quarterly base. So all I say is know the basic. Don't expect your accountant um, to do it all for you. Know the basics. Do your research. Right. So then. Whatever your accountant tell you, at least you have a little bit of understanding. It's mm -hmm. kind of like me coming to you, Tolly, and I said, um, I said, okay, can I get into SPY um, um, 400? And you'll be like, okay, um, how's the technical looks? You know, what's the news? Did you do your fundamentals? So it's kind of like, I need to know the basic or I need to have a thesis, right? I need to have a thesis or I need to know my basic before I can come to you. So I said, no, the basics traders. No, there's too much information out there for you not to know your basics. Mm. It's just, oh, and there's too many resources out there as well. YouTube, university, Google. Google you know, University. Oh. I love right. you. Yeah.
I love YouTube University. <laughs> YouTube University, get your degree with no student loan, right? Nope. Right. <laughs> Can I That's tell my daughter that? <laughs> you can. I mean, you, you got to see what she's going to say, right? But, you know, let's see if it works. So do okay, your due diligence. Like, I'm not going to work. I'm not, I'm not going to school no more. <laughs> okay. on YouTube. I'm going to go to university before I took my student loans. Who chat? <laughs> YouTube has, has all the knowledge you need. So she gave us some words of wisdom. Now. With all these gems and knowledge that she's dropped this whole entire episode, okay? If you listen, I want you to pay attention to this. So if you are interested in trading under an entity, Abby, please give us the step-by-step -step of how to open up an entity all the way through trading and then preparing to get your taxes done. Please give the step From A to Z. A to From Z. A to Z, yeah. <laughs> all right, one, identify what type of trader you are. Two, if you are going to trade um, under an LLC, you want to um, create your entity from the federal level, the state level, or the county level. Every state have different requirements. So understand what are the requirements in your state. The federal level is obtaining your employer identification number. So you obtain your EIN number. Um, the state level is registering that entity. So you're creating your articles of organization. Um, if you are going to be trading as an LLC sole proprietor, pretty simple and easy. Um, if you are going to trade at, um, under an LLC electing as an S score, that's pretty much saying, hello, IRS, I want my entity to be an L um, LLC, but I want you to tax me as an S corp, it's very important that, to know that you have to take payroll and a reasonable amount of payroll, a reasonable amount of salary. So what you can't do is make $500,000 in the stock market and pay yourself $10,000. That's not reasonable. So <laughs> state level, right? You, you created your article organization, you register your business. Once those two things happen, step number three, you would go to the bank, you would open your bank account. You're opening a business bank account. Also open a business saving account. If that bank is super nice, why not get a business credit card? Let's build um, business credit, right? I always say I love to use other people's money, not my money. So open a business credit card. Once you fund that account, then you need to contact TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, Vanguard, whatever brokers you use. TD is amazing at this, right? You call them, you let them know you would like to open a business brokerage account. They will literally walk you through it. Once you open the business account, you're going to fund the business account. Once you fund the business checking account, then you're going to fund the brokerage account. Once you fund the brokerage account, you're going to start trading under your EIN. While you're trading with your EIN, any expense you have, you use the business account. Okay? Any expense that you have, you use the business account. You do not use your personal account. Cut that out, okay? You use your personal account. Another thing that, um, a another question I usually get a lot is, how do I pay myself, Abby? If you are going to trade as an LLC sole proprietor, you are not doing payroll, you're doing draws. Draws is when you withdraw fund from an account. So you are withdrawing from the business, you're gonna transfer it to your personal right? Um, if you are going to trade as an escort, you are going to take due payroll, meaning you're going to be on a W-2. Anything else? Give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that, Abby. Thank you much for sharing. Listen, she just gave a complete rundown, so there is no excuse, but if you guys do need more information, Abby, please tell us where we can find you, give your social media, give your email, because you want to make sure you're doing this correct and who better to have it done than our own tax accounting. So Abby, yes. please, I go live every Wednesday on IG and all I do is talk about this stuff and educate. Um, I also interview traders. So do come to my IG at the relationship account. That's right, the relationship account. <laughs> That's my IG. Um, please, everything that you would want to know about 
our service is literally in our website, which is abby at serenityfsgroup.com. Abby at serenityfsgroup.com. That is also my email address. So you guys can go to www.serenityfsgroup.com is our website. So go to our website, schedule a discovery call. I love discovery calls. It gives me an opportunity to get to know you and to get to know what is your goal. When we talk about generational wealth, what does that mean to you? Um, One of the things that I can tell you about our firm, I'm transparent. Um, Ethical is very important to us and we believe in relationships. Love it. Love it. Thank you guys for coming to another episode of the Money Printers podcast. Here I am, your co-host Tola with my billionaire brother, Dane, and our billionaire sister, Abby Joseph. Thank you again for dropping all the gems on tax and accounting. Uh, we look forward to having you again because, you know, yeah. I, I think I think you got some more gems uh, stored under there. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but Thank you, guys. Make sure to follow us. Uh, you can follow our business page at the Money Printers TMP. You can follow Dame at Dame Bonds TM, and you can follow me at Live Life with Tola. And you can follow Abby. Abby, can you present your Instagram name again? At the Relationship Accountant. The Relationship Accountant. There we have it. Thank you, guys, again. Peace and love. Bye, guys. <laughs>